football special. Oh, please be quiet, pleaded Fred wearily. I just don't believe it, barked Terry. What do you and your drivers talk about, then? Fred groaned. He had arrived back late with a heavy freight train the night before and was exhausted. He wanted to get some sleep, but Terry had other ideas. He was grumbling to the others about football. When I worked in Liverpool, I used to pull the football trains, he announced. And on the eastern region, I was good mates with the football engines. Who are the football engines? asked Ivert. Fred yawned. Oh, they're Gresley B-17s. Most of them were all named after popular football clubs. Very competitive engines, they are. They knew how to hold a conversation about football, huffed Terry. Don't you know anything about it? The engines fell silent. What about Swindon Football Club? quizzed Terry. Robin said nothing. And what about Bath Football Club? Ivert looked away. Terry fumed crossly to himself. He wasn't impressed. Fred thought the conversation had died down and he could get some rest. But he forgot about William. Football trains are horrendous to pull, exclaimed William. Fred rolled his eyes. What? They're the best? snorted Terry. Just a bunch of hooligans they are. No wonder B.R. only lets them ride in the old coaching stock. They vandalise everything in their path. Rubbish, hissed Terry. Oh, it's true, agreed Ivert. They don't allow the fans to ride in the new BR Mark 1s in case they get ruined. And quite so, added Robin. Anyway, I never appreciate getting slapped in the face by a fan scarf hanging out of the windows. Terry was abashed. It's never happened to me, he grunted. Yes, because you're the engine pulling the train, snapped William. William and Terry were already on rough terms, but Terry couldn't retaliate. Everyone for once agreed with William. Terry inconsiderately let off steam crossly, much to the dismay of Fred, who by now had given up trying to get some sleep. <laughs> Red tail lamps fastened to the back of trains are very important. They signify to the signalman that the coach of the wagon with the lamp is the very last vehicle of that train, and that no more is to follow, or nothing has been detached. It is imperative for driver, fireman, or guard to have this lamp on to indicate that their whole train has gone through. If there is no lamp, it is up to the signalman to set the signals at danger and stop all traffic, as a portion of the train may have been left behind, blocking the path of another train. Ironically, something so simple can protect and save many lives. The next day, and Terry was overjoyed and very proud. He was assigned to pull a football special. As he backed onto his train, he could remember the riveting conversations he used to have with the football engines. He was very pleased, but William wasn't. He rolled up alongside. He noticed that the football special was made up of new BR Mark I coaches. Why are you using these? he asked. Using what? replied Terry. New coaches, sniffed William. Surely that can't be right. Well, I'd love to stay and chat, but I've got a game to catch. And he rumbled away. Everything was going smoothly until they arrived at another station. More fans were waiting to board the train. Terry was held back at the station. What's going on? puffed Terry. We're having to wait for extra coaches. There are more people than what the railway first fought, explained the driver. Won't be here too long. But the fans were getting impatient. It was only a few minutes, but for Terry and the fans it seemed like forever. The tail lamp was immediately placed on the last coach. The fans were soon becoming far too rowdy. Hurry up or we'll miss kick-off, one shouted. Get a move on, yelled another. Terry wasn't helping either. He was adding to it all. The fireman, guard and shunter lost patience and became distracted. The coupling wasn't securely fastened and with all the fans on board snarling at the crew, they decided to get a move on. Out of the station, Terry snorted, unaware of what was to happen next. It was the rumbling of the points that did it. The coaches swayed as they rolled over the points. The coupling couldn't take the strain and snapped. Immediately, the last coaches came to a standstill. Terry carried on ahead for half a mile until the crew realised what had happened. As they applied the brakes, they rumbled past a signal box. The signalman didn't notice until too late that the coaches had no tail lamp. He had already accepted a freight train on the same line. 
Fred was steaming towards the coaches. The guard of the football special quickly changed his mind about placing detonators on the track and decided to get everyone out quickly. Get out! Onto the line side! Now! he cried. Fred still hadn't had any sleep from the day before and was starting to nod off. He woke suddenly when he saw a guard screaming, Stop! The driver shut off steam and applied the brakes. But it wasn't fast enough. Fred hit the coaches and shunted them fiercely. Ouch! he cried. That hurt! Luckily all the fans had managed to evacuate the train and were safe. Fred's driver had banged his head and his fireman had broken his arm. Fred had damaged his buffers but nothing too serious. He was more awake than he had ever been in the past day or so. Terry heard everything. His driver told him what had happened. He felt very foolish and very irresponsible. Looks like there'll be no footy match, said his driver. The signalman ran out. He felt very guilty. Don't worry, sighed the fireman. We're all to blame for this one. Terry said nothing. That evening, Terry helped Fred back to the sheds. The shed master checked him over with a fitter. How's my driver and fireman, puffed Fred? They'll be all right. A good long rest will do them good, and that's exactly what you'll be doing, announced the Shedmaster. Now off to sleep. Fred finally closed his eyes as the Shedmaster turned to Terry. And the same for you. Accidents like this can plague an engine's mind. He turned and walked away. A few days later, Terry and Fred were back at work. At the station, Jimmy had just shunted empty coaches for another football special. Jimmy looked at the coaches admiringly. Oh, I'd love to pull an important train like a football special, he puffed happily. The pleasure's all yours, teased Terry. Everyone learnt from their mistakes after the incident, but none so much as Terry. He doesn't like football specials anymore. It's scarred him for life.